I've been writing code for a decade now, and I've used many different programming languages along the way. Getting up and running quickly with a new programming language is a skill in and of itself. I've had to do this many different times. C, Java, JavaScript, Python, Go, and the list goes on. I started using Go heavily about five years ago when I was getting into the DevOps and cloud space. Go allowed me to build these lightweight web services, which really gives you an advantage, especially in that space. On top of that, the ability to compile my code and run it on any OS was really helpful when sharing code with my teams. We now have features like generic, somehow on top of that, we've also increased the performance of a very performant language amongst a bunch of other things. The intention of this video is to teach you the fundamentals of Go just enough so that you can get started building things and becoming productive. This is not meant to be a full language specification or some comprehensive course. But if you do take the time to watch the entire video, by the end of it, you should be able to get up and running and start building something. First, we're gonna go over our file and project structure, which will explain how we're actually gonna go about running our code. Next, we're gonna review the basic syntax, which you'll use in every Go program that you write. And then the third part, I'm gonna focus a little bit on these user-defined types in Golang. It's something that you use all the time along with methods. So I think it's really valuable in this type of format to talk about that before you're off to the races. All right, if you haven't installed Go, now's the time to do so. I'll go ahead and throw the link in the description. Now that that's done, let's jump in. First, let's talk a bit about our project structure. Now that I have Go installed, the first thing that I wanna do is create my Go basics directory. After I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and jump into that directory and run Go mod init. This is how you initialize your project. Now after go mod init, this is where I provide a name for the module that I'm creating. In this case, it's gonna be github.com slash go basics. The first file that we're gonna create is our main.go file. And in the beginning, this is really the only file that you need in your project. If you open that file, you need a couple of things to get up and running. On the first line, you wanna add your package name. In this case, we're gonna call it package main. Package main is common pretty much across all Go projects. The next thing that you need is your func main. This is the main function of your app and where all the code that you wanna execute is actually going to be run. Now, if you back out of this file, you can go ahead and run this by saying go run main.go. Now it's great that we're able to run a single file, but oftentimes in projects, we want ways to decouple and separate our code. You can do so with Go by separating your code into different files under the same package name. So let's go ahead and create another file here. Now to run our entire project with an additional file, I can't run go run main.go. Instead, I have to use go run star.go. This is really useful when wanting to decouple your code in your beginning Go projects. Now let's jump into some basic syntax that you're gonna use across the board in all of your Golang projects. So we have our package main and our func main, which you're gonna see is a common theme across the whole video. At the top, we already talked about the package declaration, which is required in each Go file. In this case, we have package main here. The next stage, you have these import statements. You can do an individual import, which imports libraries from Go uh, standard library or custom modules that have been created by the community. You can also do this in a multi-import fashion instead of declaring each individual import on its own. Now let's talk about variables. The most common way you create a variable in Go is with this colon equal syntax. So in this case, I say what the name of my variable is, I do colon equals, and then I give my variable some type of value. This is really nice and kind of adds to the dynamic feel of a statically typed language like Go, which if you're coming from JavaScript or Python will feel pretty natural. The longer way to declare variables is with the var keyword. You can say var, then supply the name of my variable, and then give it a type. You can later assign the value of that variable by saying the name of your variable, an equal sign, notice it's without the colon, and then supplying the value of your variable. The next thing that you're gonna be using and coming across all the time is arrays and slices. Really more so the latter with slices, but I have arrays here just to give you an idea of the difference. The main difference between an array and a slice in Golang is that arrays are of a fixed size. So I can declare a variable name and then I can give it a size parameter in the curly brackets with a specific type that's going to be contained within that array. And then I can fill that array with up to that many values. The difference here with slices is that slices are dynamic. 
meaning I can declare a variable without defining a size and go will go ahead and adapt the size to meet my needs next let's talk about maps maps are simply a key value type of store in golang think of dict in python or object in javascript you can declare a map by assigning it to a variable you give the name of that variable colon equals and then supply a make which will initialize your map and you want to give it a type for both the key and the value like so you can access and assign values in a map like so. The next thing you're going to use all the time is loops. And Go has some different types of loops for different circumstances. So let's jump into that. First, you have your idiomatic for loop, which is pretty much the same across all C-based languages. While Go does not have a while loop, you can use for like a while loop like so. And anytime you have to look over any type of slice, which is a lot of the time, you can use the for range loop which is defined as follows. And last but not least, if you omit all of the conditionals, you can actually define an infinite loop by just using for and then an open and closing curly bracket with whatever code you wanna run infinitely in between those two brackets. The next thing that we're gonna be using all the time in our Go projects is conditional logic of some sort. Golang has a couple constructs for supporting this, the first of which being your common if else statements. This is pretty much what you would expect from other languages. Go also supports switch statements. In this switch statement, we're actually just figuring out what operating system we're running on. This is basically just a simpler way to chain a bunch of if else statements and a little bit cleaner of a syntax. Now last, but certainly not least, is error handling with Go. This is something that is a bit controversial and not a lot of people like, but I'm telling you now, it honestly has way more benefits than it does negatives, especially coming from a language though, like Python or JavaScript, where error handling isn't really addressed in an amazing way. Golang brings error handling to the front. In this example, we're just reading a file and you'll notice this pattern in Go that when you use a standard library function or even a community-based function, you'll get a value and an error that's returned. All you do next is evaluate that error with an if statement, and you'll see this part a ton. If error doesn't equal nil, then log out my error. Again, this is a part that not a lot of people love, but honestly, you get used to it fairly quickly. In this example, we open a file and then go about reading that file. The main part that I want you to pay attention to here is the error that we display after we run our file. All right, let's hop into our third item, which is discussing types in Go. Now, Go has all of its base types, right? But that's not really what I want to talk to you about here. Again, the goal is to get you up and running and productive as quickly as possible. With that in mind, I'm going to actually talk to you about how you go about defining your own types, especially the most common ones that you actually use in your real programs as you write them. One of the most common, if not the most common type you're going to define in all of your Go programs is a struct. A struct is simply a type that you can define that has keys and expects some sort of value. One of the nice things about a struct is that I can then assign methods to that struct. This is the closest thing that you're gonna find to kind of an object-oriented type of flow in Golang. A method function is defined as follows. As you can see here, you can define functions that don't actually return anything. Or, as you'll see with this function, you can define methods that return both a value and an error. Now, structs obviously aren't the only types that you can define. It's just the most useful one. And remember, we're just trying to get up and running. You can define a bunch of other types as well. The need for those types will arise as you go through your project. And it's kind of easy to discover once you get into the flow of things. Now, the best way to make sure that all these concepts really sink in is, of course, to build something yourself. If you'd like to check out a great starter project that I recommend to everyone who kind of comes to me and asks, hey, what should I be doing? What project should I be working on? Check out the link to this video where I actually cover a Go project that you can use to get up and running and start solidifying some of these concepts in your brain. Now, obviously, there's a lot of stuff that we didn't cover interfaces, how to actually cross compile. We didn't go in depth with modules so amongst a ton of other stuff. Not even mention all the amazing concurrency features that Golang has. Comment below if there's something specific that you'd like us to go in depth on. And if you enjoyed the video or learned anything at all, please like, subscribe. We really appreciate it. See you guys in the next one.